Hey there everyone, this is Danielle, playing some more Super Mario Odyssey while permanently crouching. Last time we got the rest of the A-side moons in Shiveria, with the exception of the secret path, which we'll be getting later on. In this video, we shall be getting all the B-side moons. Uh, there aren't too many here, so we should be able to do it all in one video. Uh, if we just head over this way, the moon rock is just over there. Uh, there's actually a cave directly behind it which is one of the areas we have to go once we've opened the moon rock. It's kind of a weird way to handle things. But yeah, you can see it's like pressed up against a wall here. There is a cave behind it, and we'll be going in there as one of the things we have to do. There's the cave. Uh, so that places a whole bunch of moons in various places. As you can see, there are five in that one spot in the middle there. That's because there's five in Shiveria town in different places. Um, because the map only shows you the overworld, you can't really see where they are. Because they're just all in that one location, which is a little frustrating, but manageable. Anyway, we're heading over to that moon there, just sort of hanging out at the top of the top of the cliff there. Ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba. Yeah! Uh, there's Lakitu, we already did that. Uh, there's a few more things just around in the overworld now that we can we can interact with. We already did the bunny. I'm trying to remember what else we need to do. Uh, well, there's nothing over here. Over near the Odyssey, we see, there's a, you can see there's a moon right there near the Odyssey. The easiest way to get that is to make your way over to the little peg launcher thing over here that gives you a little whirlwind. This one. Because that will launch you up plenty high to do that. Yeah! Eats a peasy. Um, let me see. We also need to do the race again, and we need to... Uh, oh, right, yeah. Uh, in the same area as the race, there is also now one of those uh, monitor biologist peoples. Uh, hanging out up here, who would like to meet a snow cheap sheep in order to figure out how they survive in the cold. So we're going to be fetching one and bringing them over here. See? The unbelievable cold. So yeah, we want to get one into this pool, basically. Uh, thankfully, fish are allowed to jump around above the water. Like, uh, I mean, on, on the land, I mean. Not really above the water. So we won't have too much trouble doing this once I remember where they are. Uh, I think they're all over at the other side to make it a little bit trickier. There's one. There we go. So yeah, once you've captured the fish, you're completely safe from the cold because the fish is immune to the cold since they live in cold water. So all you got to do is just swim over here. Uh, you can bounce like this. I'm tapping the B button to do that. Uh, you will despawn the fish if you keep doing that for too long. So you want to... I think it lasts a fairly long time, but it's usually a good idea to... There we go. Natural cold sink, there we go. And we get a moon. From this very, very cute bonita. Yeah! You're welcome, cutie. Look at that happy little hat. Look, look at that smile. Oh my gosh. I, 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 just, I just love bonitas so much. They're just the cutest. Uh, anyway, we're going to do the race now. So it's the same thing as the other race that we did in the previous video, except harder because of the extra gold Koopa. But it's not a hard race to begin with, so we're not going to have too much trouble. Uh, Koopa noise, Koopa noise, Koopa noise. So yeah, we just want to jump down, capture the cheap sheep as fast as possible, then swim over to that peg and launch ourselves up in order to reach the Odyssey. As you can see, the gold the gold Cooper did basically the same thing we're doing, uh, but it's not as good. At, they're not as good at navigating as we are. They go to one of the other pegs instead of the one that's the closest because they're not very good at this. That's a little worse than our previous time, but still way good enough. So all good. See, there's the gold Cooper now. Ba -da 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 Ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba. Yeah! <laughs> uh, what 
what else we need to do. Uh, there are a couple. There are a couple of sub areas, I think. Okay, yeah. There's one of those pipe sub areas. You can see it just there. So let's head over there and give it a look. I forget what's in this one. Um. So I don't know what to expect. <laughs> uh, oh, it's this one. Okay, the deal here is, you put Cappy on these, um, Scarecrows, and when she's on the Scarecrow, a flower path will spawn that you can follow. Uh, so basically, it's about navigating your way over to the next Scarecrow by following a flower path without Cappy's help. So this might be a bit hard, because we don't have access to Cappy, and so we can't jump very well. Uh, because... As we all know, Mario is not known for being good at jumping, unlike Cappy, who is great at it. <laughs> um, anyway, yeah, once you make it to the next Scarecrow, Ca Cappy's like, hey, don't leave without me, and she'll just fly over and we can continue. Uh, that first one was easy, it was basically a straight line. Uh, these are going to get harder. As you can see. Uh, you have to be reasonably fast here, so we can't just waddle our way across. Because things like that are going to happen. Uh, I would just be backflipping and cap diving if we had access to cap diving, but we don't because we have to put Cappy on the Scarecrow. Let's make paths show up. And yeah, she flies back over in order to do the next bit. Uh, at the end, we actually get to keep her, and we actually need to use Cappy's help to get to the second moon. So, well, we, we will be doing that without too much trouble, because once you have Cappy, you have enough movement options that crouching doesn't really hurt you too much. Uh, thankfully, a long jump is enough to get over these, despite not being as tall as the normal, as most kinds of jump. Uh, that's not good. Uh, and yeah, it, it goes around in a circle here, which is uh, not good for us. <laughs> oh my. Um, I would consider using um, a life up heart, but I don't think it's going to help too much because the main danger here is falling into the poison. And poison doesn't care how many hearts you have. I cannot believe I survived that. <laughs> okay. Uh, Throw Cappy on the Scarecrow again, there we go. So yeah, this is kind of a capless challenge area, basically. Um, because you have to do a whole bunch of little capless challenges. Oops. Rather than one big capless challenge. Um, we're losing money here, which is frustrating because... There's a certain piece of costume I want to buy that we saw in the previous uh, video. I hinted about. Okay. Okie doke. So yeah, because the flower path starts to disappear shortly after it's... Ooh. It starts to disappear fairly quickly. We need to be very fast to make our way up here. Um, like that. Oh, no, 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 no. Ah. Oh. Ah, oh. oh, that was so close. Um, because it's a slope, you will roll down it, so we have to actually keep boosting our way up using long jumps and things like that. Uh, I think if we take the one on the on this side, we should be able to make a bit more of a profit each time because of there's a couple more rings on this side. Oops. Unless we do things like that, in which case we might not make a profit. <sighs> this is probably going to be the hardest part of the B side. I completely forgot about this area until we actually came in. There we go. Okay. Okay. Off we go again. See, so yeah, our long jump is enough to clear those spikes, which is helpful because we need to be able to clear those spikes while moving. <laughs> oh my goodness. This this is a thing. Wicked. 
All right, go. I copied in the correct direction. There we go. So yeah, um, if we could make our way up here slowly, it would be much easier. But we do have to go quite quickly because the flower path does not last long before it starts to disappearing again. Oh my goodness, this is gonna be a thing. That first one's not too tricky, although it is possible to mess up without too much, uh, like, difficulty to mess up. I don't know what I'm trying to say. <laughs> uh, thankfully, we can still dive, because diving is really great and a good move. Uh, it, it should have been noted that diving does force us... Uh, yeah, we want to use long jumps here, because rolling can't get around the corners and long jumping somehow can. Somehow. Okay, so here... Wait for Cappy to arrive. There we go. Um, you can see that there's clearly going to be bullet bills here. Uh, we have to swap paths in order to evade the bullet bills, basically. And I'm a little scared. Um, sorry, Banzai build. It's, it's the big kind. Uh, so yeah, there's, there's these two paths. We're just going to start on this one because that's going to help us avoid the bonsai bills for a little bit longer. Then we actually have to swap paths and go over there. Uh, oh my god. Okay, that worked. Oh, oh my god. That was really, really tight. Um, wait, rolling under them works? Okay, that's actually easier than I thought. <laughs> Anyway, we get Cappy back. I'm gonna grab this moon first, just because I don't remember. Ba -ba -ba -da -ba. Yeah, if it gives you a path back once you've done that one. Um, but the other moon we have to get, basically we, we want to capture one of these bonsai bills. And this is gonna be the easy part, obviously, because this is the intended way without any weirdness. We just fly over here where the, where the penguin is. Ba -da -ba. Yeah! And that gets us the other one. Actually, it's pretty easy to get back, because we can capture another bonsai bill and do it that way. Or we can just fall off the edge and die. Either way. Anyway, um, both wounds collected, so the fact that we just died, not a problem. We can just leave again. Like that. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay, what else needs done? Uh, let me see, let me see. Uh... Yeah, we can see a moon just hanging out in the water over there. Uh, which we want. Uh, we also have a P-switch here, which I think makes some notes or something spawn I don't quite remember. Alright, it's a, it's a fish-based timer challenge, basically. So we want to swim over there as fast as possible. Ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba. Yeah! As you can see, it's pretty easy. Um... That might be the only timer challenge in the game that isn't Scarecrow based because you have to, you're intending to use a capture to do it, which is really interesting. Um, there's another moon down here in this little alcove, so let's go grab that. Ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba. Yeah! Uh, obviously you can do these without using a cheap cheap, like you can just go down there with just Mario. We found 500 power moons. The darker side of the moon, that's right. The post-game areas of this game are called the Dark Side of the Moon and the Darker Side of the Moon. I really love this game. <laughs> uh, if we head over... Um, so yeah, a couple of moons we want to get here. Well, we're not going to go to the Darker Side for a very long time. Because there's still several more kingdoms to do, and we're doing everything as in order as we can. Ba -da -ba -da -ba. Yeah! Uh, that one, you can't ground pound when you are a cheap cheap, so you actually have to go in the cold water as Mario to get it, which is interesting. Uh, okay, what have we got now? Uh, there's one moon over there, there's one moon in the trace walking, uh, there's five in there, and there's doing the races again. Uh, basically, that cave there that we unlocked, that's the secret race course, according to the 
uh, residents. They actually mention the secret race course and just tell people about it. It's like, hey, the secret race course is, is really hard. You should play it. It's kind of hilarious. Anyway, um, we just did this. So, we have to do get a slightly higher score, but because you apparently don't slip on the ice while waddling, it shouldn't be too tricky. Uh, okay, so we want to be going straight past those little rocks there. Okay. Uh, it's going to be a bit slow, obviously, because we're waddling. Also, we're walking on ice barefoot, so we're probably going to die. Um... About there. Yeah, it looks about right. Uh, we could actually roll this because this one's straight lines. We could use a bit of rolling rather than just wobbling. Uh, but we should be fine. Yeah, it's pretty much perfect. Perfect score! Oh my gosh. Yeah! Alright, so we're done in here. Uh, there's one more moon just out in the overworld I'm gonna grab. Then I'm gonna go back into Shiveria Town to get those five, and we're gonna probably finish up the five in Shiveria Town all pretty easy, so... Oh, no, maybe maybe we'll do this first. Let me think. Uh, I'll go grab the one over there that's just... You can see the sparkling on top of that um, icicle there. Uh, that's, yeah, there's a power moon buried there now, so we can just ground pound on the ice to dig it up. Uh, climbing up there isn't too tricky. Uh, you can, I think, do it from over here, but uh, maybe not. The easy way to do it, though, is just go over to this one and climb up here, uh, because this one has enough steps to just climb up without any trouble. Also, yeah, Mario is walking on ice barefoot. He's he's going to have like some serious frostbite and stuff. Please, get over here. Ground pound this spot. Ba -ba -da -ba -da -ba. Yeah! Alright, I think I'm gonna go try to do the races next. Um, because... They use a capture, so... I figure I want to save the last couple of platforming challenges, rather than the ones that don't use any crouching because you're in a capture. For last. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, you come over here. This is the secret race course. For some reason, this fellow is over here as well. Uh, and basically, it's a much tougher track, and there are two more power moons to get for clearing this track twice. Uh, it is much harder. It might, I might take a few tries, especially for the Class S moon. Ice Moon Circuit is difficult. It's also very pretty, as you can see. No, 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 no. So basically the trick here is steering really, really precisely so that you land in good spots and tapping B every time you touch the ground. There is no reason to never, not, not to bound. You always want to be bounding. because it makes you significantly faster and everyone else is always doing it. So, give in to peer pressure and bound everywhere. Okay, we're now in first place. Uh, we can't relax yet. We gotta do this next lap very, very well because the other players in this particular race are quite competent because this one is post-game content. Unlike the race earlier, which is essentially the normal playthrough of the game. It isn't supposed to be super hard.
Okay, I messed that up really badly, but I think we're okay. Okay, so that's the Class A race. Uh, it's not too hard. It is hard, but it's not too hard. So that's that done. That'll give us a Power Moon. Yeah! There's another moon we can get here just for doing this race again, but harder. <laughs> okay, this one is the hardest one, and I'm a little concerned. We'll see how we go. We're gonna need a better time than before, probably, because we didn't win by that huge a margin, and this time the other races are much better. Boing. Okay, we're still coming in third, which beats, you know, fourth, or I think, I think there's five place races, so fifth would be bad too. That last corner there, you want to basically stick to the middle to keep your path as short as possible. I think that's the best way to do it. Okay, we came really close to the other races just then. Hopefully we can do that again and not crash as we're doing it. <laughs> okay, I'm messing up pretty badly in this particular lap. First try! Oh my gosh. Oh, that was really close. Oh my goodness. Anyway, that's all the races done. We don't need to do anything else as a Shavarian in the whole game. Ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba. Yeah! Okay. Goodbye, friend. Oh my god, Mario. You silly, silly boy. Okay, um, the rest of them are all inside Shavaria Town, so we're gonna head over there now. Let's make our way over to the town. We could use a warp to get there, but, you know, I like actually navigating. And this is a very small kingdom on the outside anyway, so it's not too hard. There we go. Glunk. Uh, I wonder where the other ten purple coins are. Like, that's a lot of purple coins to miss. And we went pretty much everywhere. Hmm. So there's a moon that we already got. Hmm, I don't know. Anyway, uh, so there are five moons from the moon rock here. There's also a peach we can talk to over here. So we will be talking to her. Uh, she's wearing the same outfit she was wearing in, um, Bonneton now, because it's warm, I assume. Look at Qtiaru's, I love her so much. Anyway, uh, we get a moon? Yes. Ba -ba -da -ba -da -ba. Yeah! Uh, she's hinting about going to, uh, the Seaside Kingdom, which we will be going to next as well. Uh, there's one moon we can get, which is down here in the race course area. So we're going to head back down there and get it. wonder if some of the purple coins are down there too. I don't think they are. I think we already got the ones that are down here. So when I say the race course area, what I really mean is uh, the waiting room area. So we're going to have to head over there. Uh, 
Uh, and the spot I mentioned earlier in a previous video, basically if we make our way up here, uh, there were some purple coins on the other side of the snow, but I think we already got them. Just want to make sure. Yeah, we did. Uh, okay, so yeah, you can see there's all these crates in here now, which we're not here before. Basically, what we want to do is break every crate in that really tall pile, because the top one has a moon in it. Um, I think you're supposed to be able to climb up using the other piles of crates, but... They're all nearly broken, so throwing Cappy at them smashes them. So it's pretty hard to do. Oh, I think I've just pulled it off, so... Okay. <laughs> Let's just go ahead and break the crates. Like a, like a normal. I suppose if you're trying to do it coinless, you have to avoid breaking all the other crates, because they all have coins in them. Ba -ba -da -ba -da -ba. Yeah! Although I think the crate, the crate with the moon in might also give you a coin. So that sucks if you wanted to do it coinless. Um, okay, there we go. So the other four moons we want to get are in each of the little sub-areas. The ones where you got the four story moons. Um, and then the secret park, but we'll do that. We're doing that later. So we want to just basically leave the race course again by heading up this way. And we just want to revisit each of the four little sub-areas again, because they all now contain an extra power moon. Um, I'm not quite sure how you're supposed to figure that out, apart from just looking everywhere, because the map doesn't really indicate where to go to find any of these. So it's kind of annoying. Uh, for this one, you need to get a bunch of Goombas. So I'm just going to capture all the Goombas I can, basically. Uh, hopefully not accidentally do things like that, and that. Um, I believe you need 10, so hopefully we can get 10. Let's see how we go. I think they respawn pretty quickly, so we should be okay. Basically, there's another button like that one over there, but it takes more Goombas to activate. So we're going to be hitting that button with all the Goombas we can find. I believe there might be... I think there are exactly 10 Goombas in the area, so we do have to find all of them to be able to do this. Uh, again, you can just do that to make the icicle fall. I think I will just go, go recollect that moon. Um, the reasoning behind that is I want healing. Also, I want coins. <laughs> yeah, just break that down. Okay, there we go. So the Goombas do respawn, they just take a little while. I think you might have to be looking away for them to come back. Um, okay, so we have five now. I'm pretty sure we need all ten. So, hopefully we'll be getting all ten. Uh, of course, this challenge is completely unaffected by our challenge rules, because we are in a capture form and therefore we cannot crouch. Uh, seven. Oops. Come back, Goombas. <laughs> you still have to use the icicles to get up, because no matter how many Goombas you stack, your overall jump height does not change. Yeah, say so 10. And we have 7 now, 8, 9, 10. Also, I can see some purple coins there that we missed, which is good, because now we can get them. Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Yeah, you need, you need every Goomba in the area, which is 10 Goombas. And then you can step on this switch to get a moon. There we go. Ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba. Yeah! So basically you have to do a perfect Goomba, Goomba stack to do that, because they're exactly the right number. Um, they respawn, so it's not that hard, but it's a little, it's a little tricky, I guess. <laughs> also, yeah, they will explode if you step on the, on the, um, on the pipe. Okay, uh, so that's that one done. Each of the other rooms will also have a, a new power moon to collect. And probably some coins as well, because that one had some coins that I missed. Uh, I forget where it is in this one. I would like to get some of these, though. Oof. Uh, 
Uh, oh, there's some purple coins. Okay, so if we come over here, we can use these chompy fellows to just gain the height we need to grab those. There we go. There's some more just sort of floating around like that. Uh, I believe the moon is over here. You can see there's like a sparkling spot there. Yep. Ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba. Yeah. So yeah, that one's very easy. Uh, it's not even really supposed to be challenging. It's just there as an extra thing to do. Okay, we actually missed exactly one purple coin here somehow. There we go. <laughs> Okay, there's three more purple coins in, in the whole kingdom, somewhere. I just want to climb up here and see if they're around here somewhere. Uh, I don't think they are. Uh, the camera's a little restricted in this area for whatever reason. You can't look all the way over there. Probably to stop you from seeing the moon too easily. Uh, the, you know, hidden extra moon that's over there. Okay, so that area's done. I have a feeling the last three coins will be somewhere in one of the other two, so that's good. We should be able to get all of them. Uh, let's roll our way over here. Okay, uh, I forget exactly where we, where it is in the mountain. Um, oh, I think it might be at the very top. I think it might be one of those um, sneaking around in the in the ground blob things, the ones like on top of the pyramid. So I'm a little worried. <laughs> I'm also clearing out a bunch of this snow because I'm looking for purple coins, in case anyone was wondering. Aha! We now have all 50, we'll be buying the souvenirs on our way out. I might forget, because I did last time. Uh, well, not last time, time before. Did we get everything in Metro? No, we still actually missed some purple coins. I guess we'll go back and look for that later on. But for now, we're just going to be continuing this way. Yeah, it's one of these um, chase the blob things, but on ice. Oh, wow, this is going to be a thing. Because this was hard enough when you were just walking on a normal surface instead of on ice. Oh, my goodness. So close. Yes! Ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba. Yeah! Okay, that one was much easier than the other one. Probably just because I'm more experienced with playing the game this way at this point. Okay, doke. The last one is in the, uh, the, um, Typhoon room, which is, I think, this one. So let's head in here. Uh, basically, if you just have a look around, you can see an extra moon just floating in the air over there. So what we're going to do is make our way over there and grab it. It's relatively easy. Just be careful not to fall in the poison again, like I did over and over before. Basically, what we want to do is get into this platform. And then time it back a carefully. Yeah! Easy peasy. Oops. That was an accident. Alright, so we now have every moon for this kingdom, except for the secret path. The secret path we'll be doing when we get to it, so Shaveria can be 100%ed while permanently crouching. Uh, we're gonna go over to the shop now. Buy all the purple things. Uh, and I think I'll buy the veil too. We have enough money for it. Uh, so yeah, we're gonna get the sticker. And the rug. And the little uh, nesting chevarians. Really cute. Thank you, friend. Now let's go over here. Scroll, 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 scroll. Okay, so yeah, we want this veil. We also want the gown that goes with it, uh, but we don't have the money. So we'll be buying the gown once we have another 2,000 coins. 
but for now it's gonna buy the veil and wear it because that veil makes Cappy look like Tiara and I'm so proud of her look at look at that cutie oh my gosh I love her anyway anyway um look at the cutie up there there she goes oh my gosh Okay, so we're going to cash these in, and then we're making our way over to the next kingdom, which is Bub Lane. Uh, you may remember that we did not do Bub Lane's story when we were there. Uh, I think we did one story moon, question mark, out of the many that were available for us to do. Give me any coins? Doesn't look like it. It was fun, though. So yeah, I'm trying to get coins so we can buy the gown that goes with this veil. So yeah, we're going to cash in these, these moons here. But yeah, we didn't do the story in Bub Lane. The reason for that is the boss battle in Bub Lane basically requires you... I, th I think it absolutely requires you to use a Gushin to fight the boss. Uh, and I was thinking that was a bit too easy. Just like the Wooded Kingdom, I figured, well, let's not do the story just yet. Uh, however, this time, we will be doing the story. Since we'll be making our way over there, and we want to get everything. So, yeah, first thing we'll be doing is the story. Uh, we'll cash in all these moons. ka uh, As Cappy mentioned earlier when we got the 500th moon, we can now go to a new area. We also got some products, but that's not too exciting. The Odyssey has powered up for the final time and unlocked access to a brand new area, which is the darker side of the moon. We're not going to go there yet. We're going to we're going to go to Bub Lane, but we will be going to darker side eventually, and we'll be completing it while permanently crouching. <laughs> Uh, Darker Side is really, really, really good. It is a fantastic level. Um, basically, think of um, Grandmaster Galaxy or Champions Road or, um, you know, th those sort of like super player levels. Maybe even like the Special World from Super Mario World, uh, where it's just. You know, you're, you're really good at the game. Here is something to really challenge you and get you excited and stuff. Anyway, uh, here we are back in Bub Lane, which we will be saving in the next video. We'll be collecting all four of the power moons necessary to fight the boss. We'll be fighting the boss and we'll be saving Bub Lane. Uh, so that's something to look forward to. Uh, we will also be getting as many purple coins as possible. There is a moon we can get with the costume. I mean, there's a moon that is gotten using the costume, but we can't get it. Uh, I will show you what that's about once we get to the right point in the game, but for now, um, let's gonna do the story first. But anyway, for this video, that's all we're doing. So thank you for watching. And next time we're doing Bub Lane's story, so look forward to that. <laughs> Bye.